Hello everyone, I'm gonna break down my remix of Pacifist by Subsonic. So at the drop we have the main vocal. This snare. Which is kinda I don't know why I added that, I just thought it'd be cool, kinda giving you the vibe of what you're about to get in the drop. Um you've got this. I remixed the song. And I made a Nero bass in it, um, and I really liked what I did with it. Similar Outskirts was using this plug, and I was like, I'm going to use that for multiple different purposes. Still don't really use it that much. That's a lie. I use it all the time. Um, it's such a good plugin. Um, it just allows you to draw in your own phase line, and then if you turn the depth up to whatever that number is, I can't be bothered reading. and you can change these to how much quality is and stuff, but if you turn the depth up, you get some weird and wacky glitchy noises. So that with a filter, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, shout out to Similar Outskirts for that one because that's actually really cool. Um, then you've got some more trombones. I just love the trombones. I, you can't get enough of them. Like, come on. And then you've got the drop, which is just <laughs> CPU destroyer of the week or month or year already. I don't know. <laughs> I love this drop. It's so fun. So how I made this is I got a bunch of drums samples and then I just put them into drums just made some basic drums this is actually a snare I really like to use uh the Kishmer stare snare or however you say his name it's very tonal and it sounds like someone's just got a metal pipe and whacked it stuck like five OTTs on it a saturator and called it a day it's probably what he did not gonna lie, but it still sounds awesome. I really like that snare. <laughs> I pitched it down by eight, so it's in key, kind of, pretty much. And then that's really it for the drums. There is this this company ride, which I split just at the end to give it more tension and, like, release when you hit get to the snare and stuff. Uh, there's the sub. My CPU is going to die again, so if you're wondering what the crackling noise is, it's just my CPU failing to exist. Uh, there's also this sub, which is... You're probably wondering, what the hell is he doing taking all the low end out of an extra sub? So what this is, is it's this. It's also turned down a bit. It's just more of a texture than a tonal thing. It's just adding texture for when the kind of growl noise. I think this is the growl noise here that I made. So you've got that kind of growl noise. I don't think I made this. I th yeah, this is the same preset, but two different... Uh, processes and stuff so i'll go i'll go into that in a little bit but basically you've got the growl noise now you've got that kind of it's just kind of a falling sub which is kind of cool add some stuff to it right now to the growl noise the growl noise is so you've got this one Uh, this is another formant filter, before I get that wrong. Um, this is just what I like to do with the formant filter. If, if there's a noise I really like, I'll record the automation in instead of doing it myself uh, or just drawing it in because it sound, it get, you get a better sound out of it. And it just sounds very cool. So that's that. Uh, there's also... 
well, there was a dynamic tube. I obviously took that off. There is no low end, uh, because we don't want that one, that here. So possibly, uh, there's an OTT. There is another Redux. I think yeah, it's this splitter thing that I made. Uh, it's the same thing that's on this here, which is the. Uh, it's the same thing that's on that. I'm just changing it a bit. I'm I'm gonna I you might see that I use the splitter quite a lot because I just thought it was a very really, little, little, very cool rack that I made. So uh there's also the saturator and then there's a fat rack. My mixing is terrible, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and then here's the virtual riot preset I used for that. Basically, this is just maximum gnarl. I think I'll just say that because it's easiest. Uh, I think there was a sub on here and then I took it off. And then it's just like the most gnarly, sorry for the bad pun, um, like just like growl noise uh and then layered with it is this one which is just a, nor a normal one just without the i think it's the exact same, yeah it's the exact same thing just without the just with the stereo turned all the way up and the formant filter uh deleted because we don't need that on a layer obviously and I think the this one's for but this one's focusing on more high end kind of frequencies and it's turned down a bit. This one's focusing on the exact same thing. Never mind. I was I thought I was gonna get somewhere with that. Um there's also some so background lasers is just the lasers. So you've got the original lasers that I mucked about with and I told you already about. Uh, they're just a lot louder because of this thing. Uh, there's also, uh, this here. Damn, I'm already 13 minutes in recording. She, um, there's also this here. I know that's not my CPU dying. That is just isotope trash. It really isn't that trash. Uh, it's just a layer uh that i just decided to add because why not uh basically you've got trash on here uh a ring mod i don't think no uh, you yeah you've got trash on here you've got a ring mod because this is this sample here is the or this very altered sample that i've made here is um it just the exact same as this but because of the ring mod it's um turn it's like pitching it back down somehow i don't really understand how ring mods work someone tell me in the comments once again and then i stuck a fat rack on that isotope trash and then an eq and then we've also got these random lasers so this was a laser sample and then i just uh chopped it up into the right kind of pattern or rhythm yeah the right rhythm for the lasers and then you get this it's got a reverb on it and it's just a more lasery laser kind of uh and then that's really it set from the epic trombone and then there's also this here so what this was originally meant to be uh was just a massive long boy going right for the right for the drop that's what i wanted for the drop and then i was like what if i decide to or what if i go on to the oh my audio completely bugged out there i'll probably edit that and get rid of that what if i go on to serum and then uh go on to an lfo and just make it so it's kind of going in 
a triplet of whatever this is, and then just and you, then you kind of if you layer some more sounds on that, you just kind of get the. It's quite noisy, but it kind of makes sense when you hear it. If my CPU won't die. Yep, we're gonna get that CPU death all day. We're not. There's, I can't help that. Damn. Um. So yeah, that's really it for the drop. Like the whole first drop, anyway. First, the A side of the first drop. Um, there's also these clicks, which I'll just briefly explain. Um, if someone is listening to a drop and you want the main sound to stand out more, you can just use some clicks, uh, like these. And you can hear that's in the rhythm of the lasers, kind of. Um, because this is meant to be... This is meant to correspond to the growls, and then this one corresponds to the sub kind of thing, and then this is the lasers. Um, and basically, it just adds, or the human brain, like, listens to the, la the, the clicks, and then it decides, let's listen to this bassy noise, because it has clicks at the start of it. I think that's what's happening. That's what AU AU5 explained. Shout out to AU5 for that one as well. Um, but all I did for this was got the noise oscillator in Serum uh, and made this astrocity, monstrosity. Uh, and then I got an EQ getting rid of the lows because there's quite a few lows. And then I just got a limiter so it doesn't clip uh because i didn't really want it clipping anymore because it was like really really clipping and you could hear it during the whole thing i do volume automate it at some points because it just gets in the way and you can hear it too much you're not supposed to hear it um your brain's supposed to hear it but you're not supposed to hear it that makes total sense um so yeah and that's really it and then there's the original song which has just got everything deactivated then there is the vocal group again. I didn't even know that was there. I don't think that's meant to be there. So what this is, is when you're listening to this part of the song over here, which is the just massive long notes, or actually this bit over here, when you're listening to this part, you hear this. I don't even think it's meant to be there as well. I think you you hear you you hear this bit. Yeah, that bit there. It's literally just the pre-drop vocal wherever the pre-drop vocal went here. That's not the pre-drop vocal. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh right here. Oh no, it is meant to be over there. I was just looking at the wrong bit somehow. Okay. Um, so basically it's the pre that is just the pre-draw vocal. Uh but put under multiple different actually no, there's not hardly anything here. I think it I think it's just like Oh yeah, it's just the bias on a dynamic tube gone crazy because if I if I solo out and then so it gives you kind of a glitchy noise I guess I tried that on other vocal samples as well so that was pretty cool uh so during the uh drop you've got this vocal group uh, this, these haze did have a reason for being here. Oh, it was because that was another ISO EXO thing. So I was watching the final Night Realm ISO EXO thingy. I can't remember, but uh, Monodef on the BCC Discord linked it. And I was watching it 
and I heard all the cr- the crowd going "Hey!" Right? I was like, "Hey, that's pretty good." So I was like, "That's kind of that would sound dope if it was in a song." You don't hear it as much in this one, but I was like, "That would sound absolutely dope." Um. Also, going back to this noise here. I think this was also based off of another ISOXO thing. I think that was also based off of Angel's Landing, because Angel's Landing, the first drop, has those kind of choppy, uh, like, tonal screech, not screeches, like, noises. Uh, and I just wanted to have those, because I thought they sounded cool. And that is literally, that is the first drop. And then you've got this bit. This is the... Uh, other part of the A side of the draw, which is just everything, uh, but like put down by a whole octave, I think. If I check here, yeah, so everything's just oh, my CPU is gone, yeah, it's just put down by an octave, and then I'm also re pitching some things and like pit. pit pitch automation and you don't really need to know the little tiny details for in between the the drop like you don't really need to know about random laser noises do you just random so yep that is that part of the drop now there's the b side of the drop which is the original sample is down here because I thought it was really cool. Uh, I added this again. And I added this. I added them back. Not I added. There we go. Uh, then there's the original vocal for another bit in it. I can't remember where it was meant to be. So I just put it over here. Because uh, it sounded pretty cool. And chopping it up... Chopping it up and then putting a reverb on it, then just kind of cutting the reverb there gave you that kind of. And it's got a grain delay, uh, whatever that. Is. Oh wait, yeah, saturator. What am I saying? Uh, and a very biased, uh, dynamic tube. So you kind of get you get that weird kind of. And then this is probably one of my favorite parts of the drop. I do this in like all songs, but this time I added lasers or the lasers that were already here. Um, so I like to put long boy basses in my song. I, I have, I have nicknamed myself on the BCC, the master of long boy bass design, because I just love like really heavy, long ass notes for no reason um and this is one i've made ages ago this is called the big one and i turn this down by five it's more of a uh tonal and like timber thing and you kind of get it's so heavy um i've taken away all the lows from it and then this is actually a preset called Same Style uh, by these guys here. And I was like, I like the noise it made when I, I liked the noise it made. If I got rid of the rhythmic part of it, because it used to go type of thing. I, that was a horrible example. Um, I used to do that. And I was like, what if I make that noise, but just hella stretched and I kind of just did that and then I was like okay fat rack multi-band dynamics compressor whatever you want to call it EQ saturator limiter and then you kind of got that and it sounds sick I love it I use it every single time I use it all the time actually I'm using it up here as well I think this one here I've just added that kind of rhythm thing back though. Um, there's also this, which is another 
uh, preset that someone's made on Splice. Uh, it's big saw. It was a very big saw, but they made it even bigger. It's an OTC with a fat rack, uh, uh, EQ, and glue compressor and a limiter. Don't really need the limiter on there if I've got the glue compressor, but I don't think the glue compressor is actually doing... Oh yeah, no, the glue compressor is not doing well. <laughs> oh god. Um, and then there's another one of those, and what I like to do with that is I like to layer the same base, but just chuck an isotope trash on it, and then put it on the broken amp jam, because then it sounds like a guitar. And then altogether you kind of get that. So that's pretty cool. And then I really like the lasers at this point because I just chopped off the rhythmic part of it and I just went. This bit reminds me of uh, the pit by Boss Fight. I think it's the second drop in the pit. I could be completely wrong. Could be the first one. Correct me if I'm wrong. I just thought it was very cool. Uh, I did the same at the end of my song. I think it was the end of my song, Smiler. Yeah, it was. I was like, big, long bass. But I, it was just the big, long bass. It wasn't with the lasers. So that makes this one a bit different, at least. So now I've changed this one quite a bit. Or I haven't changed it. I've just, uh, yeah, you've got this. This is, this is, I'll let you hear it. So the drums here are just doing the same thing. I think it's all the dr drums are just doing the same thing. Because what's going on is if you have it in this pattern, it sets it up for like the perfect, like unexpected, like long boy bass drop. It just, it's the most perfect unexpected thing. Because you're not really, if you hear four on the floor drums before you hear like whatever the hell is going on here it's just so unexpected kind of and it just makes it 10 times better i feel um there's also the sub which is just doing the same thing as the long boy bass up here there's also some clicks which are also doing the same thing as the sub type thing you get it um and then this is where this first came in uh, I don't need to explain that anymore. Uh, there's also... Yeah, nothing really different here. I I did add this vocal sample. I was like, hmm, I don't know what to add here. And I wanted to add something from the original song, but I couldn't find anything other than, like, this. Or what I've already done with the pre-drop. Uh, so I was like... Right, let's add some random vocal run. And it reminded me of, uh, I think it's Crossfolds. I think it, either Crossfields or Crossfolds. I think it's Crossfolds by um, Beast Boy on Disciple Roundtable on his, I think it's Unleashed EP. I can't remember. But basically, he had a run on that that was like. That's not like a cool run going through the song i didn't add it going through the drop uh but i kind of just added it and it sounded sick and then i kind of pitch it pitch this up and down and then you get that yeah that is literally just it for the whole entire two drops just it ends the end that's all you're getting you're not getting any more any more music from me for another month or five months. Uh, I'm working on an album, so you guys will get to see that at some point, but definitely not soon because it's like nowhere near done. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, and I'll see you next time.